That's why. Oh, shoot. Oh! I'm down. Just giving people a few more minutes to come into the live. How are y'all doing? How is everybody doing? Hey, 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 Sierra, hey, Blackheart, hey, T. Shinda, how y'all doing? Make sure y'all go ahead and drop those green hearts when you come into the live. We are about to get started in a minute. All right, I'm going to press the topic on the video. Just letting a few more people into the live. Hey, Bob Tomato. Hey, everybody. All right. So we are going to get started today. Welcome. Happy Monday, everybody. It is officially Monday. I was going to say Monday. It is officially Monday, December 14th. Hey, we're Apple. And we are on our 14th day of live vlogmas. So how y'all doing on this Monday? I want to say I appreciate everybody coming into the live, everybody um, joining me here every night at 8.30 p.m. And I'm going to go ahead and get started with my intro. So, hey, everybody, thank you all for joining. I am Army Princess, a U.S. Army soldier. I've been in the military for over 10 years now, and I love to share my experiences with you all. So tonight we are going to talk about hairstyles, military hairstyles for women and men in basic training in particular, in the military, but basic training in particular, because those are my biggest right. questions of what I should do and should not do when it pertains to my hair, when I'm going to basic training. So just going to let a few more people come into the live. Hey, everybody, when you come in, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and make sure you drop the green hearts in here so we can get some more people in the live tonight. If you all have questions, I am going to open up, open it up for question and answer in a few minutes. But I have pulled up some slides of some authorized hairstyles and some unauthorized hairstyles. Um, I have to look for some unauthorized ones for men. But I know there's a few. I know we have a few men in the live tonight. Um, but I want to begin starting with basic training hairstyles because for basic training, it is very, very strict, like way more strict when it comes to the standards than it is once you graduate basic training in AIT when you come into the military. Now, it's still pretty strict. But um, when you're in training status, the drill sergeants and the leadership want you to really, really be by the standards so that you can get the gist and get the feel for what the military is. So you can know what the regulation is and you know when you're not within it and also for training. So a lot of the purposes for the reasons why you can and cannot wear a hairstyle a particular way is for training and uniform purposes. You have to wear your uniform and be able to wear your uniform correctly correctly. Um, every single day. So a lot of the hairstyles that we like to wear, especially us females, can be bulky, can be faddish, can be just crazy. So um, you have to stay, that there has to be some left and right limits or else people will just color all outside of the line. So gonna just let a few more people come in. Hey y'all, hey Logan, thank you for joining. Hey Jessica, hey Cammy. Oh, I didn't know it was a bunch of ads just for y'all to come in. That sucks. They got ads in the beginning. Um, Jul Julanda said, daughter just passed naps. That is awesome. Congratulations. I'm happy for her. For anybody that's about to go to basic training, please make sure you check out my website so you can get your hands on a basic training starter kit. So basic training starter kit comes 
with a pen. It comes with a notepad with the Soldier's Creed and the Warrior Ethos and the um, something else. Soldier's Creed, Warrior Ethos, and General Orders in it. And then it comes with 10 note cards with 10 envelopes. And on the note cards, they have uh, military phrases and sayings and then the envelopes that are provided for you to be able to write home because we all know that basic training you do not get to use your cell phone very often the most popular form of communication when you leave for basic training is snail mail so phone calls are few and far between and you want to still be able to communicate with your loved ones and family back home especially right now during COVID so you want to be able to write to them now you can buy pen paper and all of that jazz when you get to basic training but why not bring it with you so you don't have to worry about it you already know that you have it so make sure you check out my basic trainer starter kit and in all of the comments of my videos I put a coupon code for money off of the basic trainer starter kit so that was my spiel on that, but we are going to get into hairstyles. So I get a lot of questions about hairstyles for females in the military. Y'all already know if you watch any of my videos, I have a whole series on hair and makeup in the military because I've done several videos on it. But my go-to answer for anybody that's looking for a good hairstyle in basic training in particular is braids, cornrows straight to the back with your real hair. I don't care how long your hair is, how short your hair is, it, that does not matter. Cornrows straight to the back with your real hair. That's my number one suggested hairstyle that I'm going to suggest to you every single time. Now, I know I have people that are relaxed. I know I have people that are natural. I know I have people with long hair, people with short hair, people who can and cannot braid. If you cannot braid, find somebody to braid your hair. There's always going to be somebody in basic training in your company that can braid. I guarantee you they are busy when it gets to basic training because everybody's in line asking for their hair to be braided. That is the best possible hairstyle for you in basic training because what it does is it allows you to get your to your scalp when you need it. It allows for your hair to be pulled back um, and out of the way. Um, if it's long enough to be, you know, braided back and put in a bun, that's fine as well. But if it's just short, just tuck it in. But that's the best hairstyle for your headgear. And when you're in basic training before COVID, pre-COVID, you had to do a lot of things like you have to wear. First of all, you have to wear headgear all day, every day. So there are probably going to be four types of things that you have to put on your head. So you have to wear what's called a PT cap. You have to wear a PC cap. You have to wear a beret and you have to wear a gas mask and your um, Kevlar, your helmet. So that's five things, actually, that you will have to have on your head at some point throughout basic training. And every single day, you're going to wear the PC at least. Depending on when you go, you're going to wear your PT cap if it's winter time. So you're always going to have something on your head. You have to be able to have it fit properly. And the best way to do that is to have your hair braided all the way back to the back. If you're looking for a hairstyle now, you don't have to have braids. You can have your hair, you know, your regular hair back into a ponytail. But if you're looking for a protective style, something you don't have to worry about during basic training and be able to put all your head gear on, be able to get up in the morning and just go. I say braids to the back. Yeah, I um, Jessica said I was the braider in basic training. Yes, there's always one. I'm telling you, there's always at least one, probably more than one, but there's always at least one in basic training because I get a lot of people. Well, I can't braid. I don't know how to braid my own hair. Find somebody. Trust me. When you get there, there will be somebody to braid your hair. Logan says, start charging people to, to braid. Yes. If people people charge them. I mean, the basic training, you don't really have money to pay for it. But when you get to AIT, definitely charge them. T. Shinda said, yep, so true. As Cami says, so no box braids. And no, no box braids. I do not suggest box braids. Box braids are probably... One of the biggest braids that I would say no. And my reasoning for no box braids is because typical box braids are big and bulky. You do not want big and bulky hair because, like I just said, there are five different types of head gear that you have to wear throughout your basic training. Mm -hmm. And it has mm -hmm. to fit snugly. It has to fit correctly. Box braids are super bulky, super big. You have to have your hair back in the bun and your butt. There's a regulation on how big your bun can be. So if you have a big, if you have long, big braids, that means your bun is going to be this big. Your bun is going to be out of regulation. It's going to be heavy. And then when you put your, your gas mask on and your Kevlar on, it's not going to fit correctly. 
So no box braids. You don't want anything oh, bulky no, and anything no. heavy. Fine. Um, somebody asked me about thank you, Logan. Thank you for the super chat. Somebody asked me about um let me put Logan up here for showing love every single day. Somebody asked me about micro braids. Now, micro braids would be a great hairstyle. The thing is with micro braids is that depending on where you go, drill sergeants may or may not allow micro braids. Now, when I went in, the drill sergeants did not allow micro braids. I don't know why, because micro braids is a great protective style. But I hear sometimes, yes, you can get through with micro braids. And then I hear sometimes, no, they won't let you go with micro braids. So to be safe, so you're not sitting there like I was and they make you take your hair down that night when you just spent your $200 to get it braided. I would say no micro braids. The other hairstyle that I get asked all of the time, all of the time is wigs and weaves and sew-ins. I do not suggest wigs at all. Because that's something you have to take on and put off every single day. You're not going to have time to have the bold hold and the gorilla snot and the, the edges glue. You, you're not going to have time to do all that. Is this not that type of party to be in there trying to lay edges? So most people come with the lace wigs and all of that. No. You you don't want something that you can take off and put on like that. Because like I said, you're going to be pulling headgear on and off. You're going to be on the obstacle course. You're going to be running. You're going to be rucking. Like you don't want something that's going to be easy to slip off and fall off. Um, with weaves, you want to be able to get to your scalp. Now, I would say, Cammie asked about sew-ins. You could get a sew-in. I, I, I'm not opposed to sew-ins. My issue with sew-ins is that I wouldn't suggest you keeping a sew-in in for 10 oh, weeks yeah. and not being able to clean your scalp properly. I, I don't I don't think you should leave sew-ins in for more than like six weeks. So basic training is 10 weeks. I just don't think it's healthy for your hair. It's definitely a protective style, but you get dirty and sweaty. And you, if you get dirt in your hair, if you are low crawling in the dirt, if you're laying in the dirt, if you're super sweaty because you rucked two, three, four, five miles, you probably going to want to wash your hair. Like it's going to get stinky with a sew in and in a quick weave. And yes, you can wash it with a sew in in or, or a quick weave, but it takes a long time to dry like that. So that's why I'm against it. Now, yes, it is a possible protective style. You can, if you just get regular straight hair, you can put it back in a bun, but you're not able to get to your scalp. Um, that's the same with, um, somebody else asked me about some other kind of weave. That's why I don't suggest weaves or wigs because you want to be able to get to your scalp to clean your scalp. Blackheart said, my hair was a mess some days. Yes, your hair going to be a mess. You're going to, you literally roll in the dirt and drag in the dirt and lay in the dirt and you want to be able to clean your hair when you need to clean it and get to your scalp when you need to so i'm going to pull up in a minute we're going to talk about the men too because there's some new restrictions on men and men hair but i am going to pull up some pictures for you all uh let me put my other screen up pull up some pictures of you all um for what is authorized and what is unauthorized hairstyles. So let's talk about unauthorized hairstyles first. So let me see if you all can see that. So these are unauthorized hairstyles. And if you can see um, multiple braids, you cannot do this. She has like three rows of like braids to the back. You cannot do that. Um, up here, this girl, I don't know why it goes dark. She has like a crazy headband on. Twists are not authorized, but even though now I guess they, they are letting you wear twists, that's kind of, this is kind of like an old picture. This type of clip, let me see if I could go back to where it's not. So I don't know if y'all can see that. Let me see. This is the same thing. So this type of clip here, where did, where did my picture go? This clip here, if you can see this clip, that's unauthorized. This kind of claw clip here. Um, yeah. You also have this yeah. one with, I don't know what she got going on, y'all. What What is all of this? What What is all of this? Here's a better picture. Let me move this off. Yeah. What What is all of this? 
Why is it just going all over the place? This, this is unauthorized. For my natural ladies here, my natural females, this is a bulky. Let me go back to the other picture. I need to move some of these pictures out. This hairstyle is super bulky. And if she was to put her hat on up here, her all of this would stick out of the size of the hat like Bozo the Clown. That's literally what they um, pertain it to. Oh, what happened to my screen? Let me put it back up. Sorry, y'all. Let me put it back up. Trying to get back to the picture. So can y'all see this here? My picture go. Can you wear a puffle or does it have to be a bun? Cammy, you be coming with the good questions, girl. Hold on. Hold on, girl. Hold on, girl. I'm down. All right, let me make it big so y'all can see. Make this be okay. So I don't know if you can see this here. Um, do y'all see the last girl on the end? Can y'all see the last girl on the end with the natural hair? Let me know if you can see that one. If my screen came back up, Logan says seems like a great area in the army. I went to orientation basic with beads. <laughs> Beads in my braids. I was told I had to take my beads down, but I was able to take my braids out without taking down my hair. Okay. What is basic training orientation? That's something new. Yeah, I'm Let me know if y'all can see my screen here. So this last girl on the end with the natural hair. Okay, y'all can see it. So this nat this last girl on the end here with the natural hair, it, she has a very excessive bulky hair. So you can have natural hair, but it can't be. If it gets like this, she probably just need to put it in a bun. Now this one here, this one here, this one right here is like, this was really popular, you know, okay, I can't have my hair too long. If I wear it too long, I have to put it in a bun. Okay, so let me just get it cut into a short bob. Your bob, and I tell people all the time, let me take Black Hearts comment down so y'all can see. Your bob cannot be like short in the back, long in the front like this Nicki Minaj thing yeah. she got going on. So a lot of people like to make it like a faddish or stylish. So they'll have it short in the bag and then it'll dip long in the front. It says there cannot be more than a one inch difference from the back to the front. So within one inch, you can have it a little bit longer. But this up here, all the way down here to her collar, is definitely more than an inch difference. So this is this is out of rig. That's why it's an unauthorized hairstyle. Now, sister girl over here got her bangs all in her eyes. The regulation on bangs is one inch above your eyebrows. So this right here that's all the way down to her eyes is way too long. So she can't even see. Now, this girl has blonde hair with a black scrunchie. You can wear a scrunchie, but your scrunchie needs to match your hair color. If you have blonde hair, you need to have a blonde scrunchie. If you have black hair, a black scrunchie. Brown hair, a brown scrunchie. This is just, it says not properly secured. So she got a bun going on in the back, which is hanging down a little too low. But the whole front is hanging down. So all of those swoops and flyaways that people like to have going on, that's a no-go. Um, what's going on over here? She got a side bun. You cannot put your bun to the side and then you cannot do zigzag parts. It has to be one straight part. This here looks like she hanging out on the weekend. So those are some examples of unauthorized hairstyles for females. That's why I say cornrow straight to the back, y'all. And they give you pictures. So the people that come to work like this and then they get mad, there's literally two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve 10, 12 pictures of what your hair should not be like. And all of these pictures are up here of people that came to work like this. 
they have been the example. And I'm oh, sure there's more. I've seen some crazy. I've seen somebody with goddess braids, like crazy stuff. Shea Butter says, so no box braids are allowed. So you missed when I talked about box braids because somebody asked about box braids. No, you cannot. You you should not wear box braids. Now, if you get into like small box braids, then maybe, but box braids are typically long and typically bulky. You do not want box braids. Um, let's see what else we got. Let's see what else we got. Um, army hairstyles for females. Look at my video pops up here. So I have videos on it, y'all. It pops up in Google. Make sure you check it out. For the men, let's talk about the men. Let me pull this down real quick. Let me put it back on me. Let's talk about the men. <laughs> the men. So new information has come out as far as basic training. Um, usually, so usually for the men, when they go to basic training, they get their hair shaved off all the way off. There's no like fade. There's no like, you know what is that high top and fade in the back? None of that. When you're in basic training, you get it shaved all the way off, all the way. Everybody. It's the same hairstyle, but because of COVID, everybody is doing a 14 day quarantine oh. when they get to basic mm -hmm. training. What that means is you will not get your haircut within the first 14 days. So if you come to basic training with a lot of hair already, and then you go another 14 days without a haircut, you are way out of regulation. And it really does not sit well with the drill sergeants because you're just walking around like every day you're walking around out of regulation, but yet you have the uniform on. So what I've been told from fellow recruiters and fellow drill sergeants for my men is that when you go to basic training, come with a, a shaved head. I know it's going to hurt your little heart to go get everything shaved off. Normally, you just get it done in basic training and, you know, you kind of deal with it, but everybody's the same. But come with a short hairstyle already. It will save you the embarrassment. It will save you being, you know, mocked at by the drill sergeants. You already kind of be in regulation. Now, the regulation for men is oh, I want to. Why are you laughing, Logan? Logan, why are you laughing already? <laughs> Madam Paca said, looking oh, like man. Moses. <laughs> Y'all funny. Um, <clears throat> for the men, you accept if you have a profile. Yes. Well, I'm talking about like your hair, your head. Like I don't re see very many people with like a shaven head profile. I'm sure maybe there's somebody, but... Before. For the face, I mean, yeah, I'm not too worried about that. You can always get a shaving profile or just buy razors when you get there. But for your hair, like just come with it shaved off already. Um, he, for men, the hairstyle is no more than two. I want to say two inches on the top. Um, and then, of course, the, sh the sides should be tapered. Um, you should shave if you don't have a shaving profile. I think some people try to just skirt by or they have a shaving profile, but they got everything lined up. You cannot do that. You can't have all of this lined up neat with a shaving profile because that means you can shave. But um, shaving profile or shave your face and then just come with your head shaved. It, like I said, it's going to hurt your little heart, but it's going to save you in the long run. For my females, I get females all the time. Do I need to shave my head? Should I just go ahead and shave my oh, head? Please don't shave your head. Girl, you do not need to shave your head. I don't know where people get it from the movies. That's what it is. They, that's where they get it from. That movie G.I. Jane. You do not need to shave your head. Actually, you your hair has to be a certain length to be within the regulations. So, um... The please don't shave your head. Now I get questions about dreads. Dreads are fairly new as oh, far as yeah. being authorized yeah. in the military. When I came in, you could not wear oh, dreads, just like yeah. the picture shows twists. You can wear twists and you couldn't wear dreads in the in the military. But they changed it and now you can wear dreads. Um I would suggest I had somebody ask me about um putting their dreads in a ponytail. She said she couldn't put it in ponytail, but then she had the big the big dread. So, 
Um, this is for like the smaller, tinier dreads or sister locks. Go ahead and put them in a ponytail. If you have like the big dreads, like the little Wayne dreads, it's going to be pretty hard for you to keep that in regulation, especially if they are like not really long enough to put in a ponytail. I would say if you have like short dreads, maybe at least for basic training, you can keep them cut like shoulder length and just kind of wear it down like a bob. But um, I, I really don't suggest getting dreads. Somebody asked about getting dreads, like crochet dreads for basic training. Please don't. It's not that kind of party. You're not going to the club. You don't need like Senegalese twist and and crochet dreads and crochets and all of that. Get something simple, mm -hmm. something easy, something that you can um, wash your hair and oh, get to your geez. scalp if you need to. So for the people that are in here, because it looks like I have a lot of people that are in the military, oh, no. what has been your experiences with um, your hair or other people's hair in basic training in particular and maybe AIT? Like, what, what are some suggested hairstyles that you would say? <laughs> yes, we're not going to the club. You don't need to get sew-ins. You don't need to get crochet. Uh, what's those things called? Spring twists and Senegalese twists and all of that. Like, it, it's really not that type of party. You, you're not going to be able to do all of that. But what are your suggestions for hairstyles? Because I have a few females in here that have gone to basic training. I definitely would not suggest box braids. What do y'all think? And for my men, I know y'all said no shaving profile. I'm kind of against the shaving profile too, unless you truly, you know, have the type of skin. Okay, plant. Well, <laughs> unless you truly have the type of like a curly, curly hair that will break out if you, if you shave your face. Make sure y'all hitting the thumbs up button. For the new people coming in, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button for your girl. Share this on your social, social media. Follow me on my business Instagram. I have it scrolling at the bottom. Nobody want to talk about hair? I got 12 people in here. I appreciate the super chat, Logan. Thank you. If uh who said they sound with Jalunda? Jalunda? I'm, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Daughter just passed Neb. So what was her job? Can you let us know what her job was? Um, hey Danique. Jessica said when I got to basic training, I had cornrows in and my MTI made me take them out and she never explained why. But afterwards she explained that she wanted us to learn how to put our hair in a bun. I never heard that. But, I mean, I guess it's good training, but I think it's pretty extreme. I mean, yeah, I never I never heard of that, that you had to take it out just to learn how to do a bun. I do have bun in the bag, if anybody looking. Logan said, no problem. Denise said, my hair is so thick, it's sad and hard to maintain. Get you some braids, girl. Get you some braids. Jessica said, I took them out, but it was hard. Where did it go? <laughs> I took them yeah. out, but it was hard yeah. to keep up with my yeah. thick hair. Yes, I, I don't suggest, like, if you have very thick hair, um, if you're not yeah. really good at doing your own hair, I do not suggest wearing your hair on basic yeah. training because basic training is a place where you need to keep it neat. You need to keep it back. You need to keep it looking professional and it's going to fly away because of all of the things you're doing with it. And if you're not used to doing your hair or maintaining your hair, it's going to be very hard. That's why I suggest braids to everybody. I never heard of them saying you had to take your braids down to learn how to do a bun. That's crazy to me. So men can't come in with waves. No, ma'am. You can come, but they're not going to last too long because in basic training, you're not getting a haircut every every um week and it's like i keep telling y'all it's not that type of party you're not gonna be able to look cute the waves you got to keep the wave cap on and do all of that your hair is gonna look a mess so everybody um gets a haircut in basic training and when i say haircut all the way off <laughs> someone told me i have to cut my hair before going to basic but i feel bad when i got to basic and see people with braids i don't, I don't know, know who told you that who set you up for failure like that? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You do not have to cut your hair. If you don't want to cut your hair, please don't. 
cornrows that are close together. Yes, that's why I say with your real hair. I'm not saying with weave or feed in and all of that. No, none of that. Your regular hair. Hey, we got a bunch of new people in here. Thank y'all. Make sure y'all go ahead and hit the thumbs up button so we can get more people in here. Denise said, all oh, says shaking my head. I was going to get that. Jessica Savage. No, no, no. NYC Colette. I like that name. Hey, girl. I don't know if you discuss people with curly hair because I have 3C, 4A hair, but I don't know what hairstyle will work. So for you, I would say a bun. You are good to go with a bun, sis. Do a bun, pull it back. And it doesn't have to be a donut bun. Like literally pull your hair back in a ponytail. I got mine. I just take the whole ponytail and twist it really tight and tuck it with a rubber band. Or if your hair is long enough to braid, put it in, put it to the back, braid the ponytail and just twist it and tuck it. It doesn't have to be a donut bun. It just has to be pulled back and it, the, the end of the hair has to be up in a bun. So your hair would definitely work with just, pulling it back and putting it in a bun. Now there are other alternate hairstyles for people who don't want to wear a bun. Bun is just the best way to keep all of the hair neatly, you know, all of the time, most of the time, but you can wear, you can wear um one braid to the back. Like you can corn, if you can braid your own hair, you can cornrow your hair to the back or you can wear two braids to the back. Those are authorized as well. Um, Like I said, you can put your hair in a ponytail and braid the ponytail and just wrap it around and tuck it. HR for MOS. So are you talking about 42 Alpha? That is a great MOS. We talked about that earlier this week, oh, Jalunda. Your wrong. new grow won't show if the cornrows are mm -hmm. close together. Okay. Sorry. Yes, I definitely suggest close together. Can I have micro braids or should I get cornrows? <laughs> Danique, I know you're just not coming in. So we talked about micro braids. I would not suggest it because depending on where you go, sometimes they are or are not authorized depending on where you go. And you don't want to spend $200 for micro braids and have to take them out yourself in like two, three days. That is not fun. I would suggest cornrows. If you cannot braid, you can find somebody there that can. They don't want you to look good. No, they don't want you to look good. Really, they don't want you to look good. That's that's the truth. I never thought about it like that, Tashinda, but you are definitely right. They don't want you to look good. That's why they take all of the makeup away. And it's not like... <laughs> hate like people say they don't want you to look good they hate me. but that's not what you're here for that's why i keep saying it's not that type of party that's not what you're here for that's not what your focus should be nobody should be looking at each other with googly eyes we don't need any of that type of distraction you should be focused on learning your job because these are the skills that they're teaching you to save a life when you go down range so if you focus on how you look and how much makeup you have on and trying to meet up with somebody and trying to make boyfriends and girlfriends then you're not going to learn what you need to learn. So the focus is off looks. The focus is off hair and makeup and nails and all of that. And it's strictly focused on learning to be a soldier and learning to look out for each other and take care of each other. So they don't want you to look good. The guys in my platoon do not shave their beards and all of the platoon got smoke for an hour. That's what they get. That's really what they get. Has anyone gone in with a TWA? Yes, you can go with a TWA. And I want to say you can wear a headband. So if you have a TWA, for the people who do not know what a TWA is, it is a teeny weeny afro. Basically, when you do like a big chop and you have like this much of an afro, you can definitely go in with a TWA. I would suggest getting a headband, kind of like when I, I got a wide headband on, but getting a headband, a thin one, and pulling it back. But you want to make sure it is, small enough for you to be able to wear your headgear. Danique said, congratulations at Jalunda Dorn. Yes, girl, congratulations on your daughter and her passing maps. Danique said, Fort Jackson, and so true. Um, is Cami. I asked, could you wear a puff ball in the back, or does it have to be a bun? So... It depends on how long your hair is, I would say. Like, if you have a little bit of hair, like say your hair is short and you pull it back and you your little bun is like this big, oh, like literally know. this big on the back. I mean, you don't have to necessarily put that in a bun. Now, if you pull your hair back and your hair is all the way like this and it's coming down your back, then you don't need a big puff ball. Like if you got 
the type of hair that's going to make a big puff? No, you cannot wear a big puff. So that question is depending on, I would say, how long your hair and like how big and curly your hair is. Because some people don't have big, fluffy, curly hair. It's not going to make a big bun or a big puff. Some people do. But that's a good question. I saw it up there. I'm sorry. I meant to answer earlier. Um, Jalunda said, thank you. So y'all have some very good questions tonight. We are at 35 minutes. Um, let me know what other questions you all have. I don't really have anything else scheduled for tonight. So I can stay on as long as you need. We're probably going to go another 10, 15 minutes, depending. Um, if a girl cut her hair bald, what are they going to do or say? You know, that's a good question. I really don't know the answer to that question. I'm sure somebody's done it. I'm pretty sure somebody probably showed up like that because they thought they probably had to cut their hair or they were told they had to cut it just like the other girl. I don't know, because technically you would be out of regulation. So, I mean, I guess they just try to make you grow it back. You, right now you have 14 days of um, quarantine. So I don't know how much you can get in 14 days, but they probably just maybe let you grow it out. I hope. Um. I'm trying to think of other hairstyles that people ask me about. So I have a bunch of videos, like I said, on my channel. I have a whole playlist on my channel for hair and makeup in the military um, with different hairstyles because you guys may not know that I do not wear a bun typically. Like I normally, when I wear my real hair, this is not my real hair, but when I wear a real hair, my real hair, I never, ever wear a bun. I no, more, I mostly more often wear braids like my real hair braids like so i would wear two braids to the back or i would have like one braid down the middle in the back and just tuck my ends i'm just not the bun type i just don't like the bun on me um if i wear a ponytail i kind of like loop it through but i never wear braids oh so i called around seeing if they can put me in active and i'm getting a run around that's what I figured. Like, I, when you first start to process something like that and you already kind of go halfway through and sign on the paperwork, it's going to be very, very hard to get out of it. Not impossible and definitely something that I would try to work towards, but it's not going to be easy. But keep trying, girl. Please keep trying. If you got to go to different recruiters or recruiting station and talk to different people, please keep trying. Um, but... Yeah, I know you said you were doing reserve first and then trying to switch to active. The good thing is you haven't actually gone in yet. I don't know if you signed a contract already, but yeah. Hey, Madam Paca, they probably would hand you a, a bob wig. No, they don't have any wigs in basic training. Um, Yeah, basic training is... It's really basic. <laughs> like you have little PX, little general store to get the things you need, like the toiletry type things you need. Get your tennis shoes and that's it. You're not going to really get anything extra. Um, I just uploaded a video on my channel today, you all. So make sure you check it out after this. It's actually kind of like an update video on what's been going on with me in my life and everything that's going on and what's coming in the future. So make sure you check that out. And if you are a business owner or thinking about starting a business, I am currently doing boss mess. So uh, yeah, definitely check out my boss mess playlist. And yeah. Denise said, yeah, I'm trying. I'm mostly going to have to wait until after AIT and I'm not and trust me if i took if it took me years to come into the army so okay so you're gonna have to wait till after ait and then go active thank you logan denise said yes congratulations you got an enlistment thing yes so i re-enlisted is what happened i re-enlisted in november so i have like clips and pictures from my re-enlistment ceremony um on my video that i just uploaded today and i'm going to try to get into more vlogging 
and telling my story through vlogs. So if you all have any suggestions on actual like vlogs that you want to see and video ideas that you want me to do, please let me know. I have so many videos already up on my channel. I have over 300 videos up on my channel already, but I want to do more. I want to grow more. I want to get, you know, better as a content creator. And I want to give you all more instead of just sitting in front of the camera. So I figure I can give you all more or the best way to give you all more is to show you my life. And I always talk about different experiences. Everybody has their own experience in the military. My experience is not going to be your experience. But I think if you see different experiences, especially if you're thinking about coming in, then it kind of gives you insight on the overall big picture of what the military life is like. Logan said, how much did they offer you? They offered me a book bag and a cup and a pen that's what i got <laughs> and two four-day passes so that's what i got for re-enlisting i got a i didn't even get a book bag i wanted one i got like a, a water bottle like one of those ones that keep your water cold for like hours and days i got a pen i got a hoodie and i got two four-day passes and another seven years in the military denise said yes congratulations I want to be just as knowledgeable as you are. And thank you for all the information you share. Oh, thank you. Um, hi, off topic about hair. But if you have an acute asthma, can you still join the Army? Do they check your medical records before going to basic training? So when you go to MEPS, when you go to MEPS, you get a very, very intense physical. And they're going to check all of that. Like, they're going to check everything. They're really, really, really going to dig because at MEPS, they are trying to disqualify you. Like, that's the goal of MEPS is to try to disqualify you. Like, I, people don't really see, know that, but really that's what it is because they want to weed all of the people out that probably shouldn't join the military that already have pre-existing conditions because once you join – and you get halfway through, the Army has spent X amount of dollars on training you and, you know, all the stuff that it takes to get you through training. And then you get hurt because you already were sick and you probably shouldn't have joined anyway. And then they have to pay you. So the goal of them is to try to weed out the people that don't need to be in the military. So they are going to do some digging. I hear that asthma is a disqualifier but it kind of goes back and forth sometimes you can sometimes you can't maybe it depends on the how severe it is or the day that you show up i really don't know but i have heard that several times so do you have any advice or helpful tips for dual military same branch with kids wow lee i don't know if it's lee or lie but i have a whole playlist on dual military or being married in the military so i am dual military same branch with kids um so definitely check out my channel check out my married in the military playlist but the advice i had so we talked about this a few like a week ago being dual military i had my husband on um advice that i would suggest is um just be flexible and work with each other so the goal or what should be the goal when you have a military career is to like progress and go up and every duty station you should learn more you should um do more you should do those broadening assignments and stuff to broaden your career and your knowledge base and so certain you should move strategically i'm trying to say so certain duty stations, certain assignments will help you get further in your career and progress. But both people can't do it at the same time. It's a give and take. So if you go to an assignment, both of y'all go to assignment, let this person focus on their career. And this person kind of hold down the family and hold the back burner down. And they do all of that hula hula stuff. They go to all the classes. They go to all the training. They do. They get promoted. They do that stuff. Go to the next duty assignment. Let this person do it. And this person kind of hold the family down. This person do all the hula hula stuff, all of the, the training, all of the classes. And every duty station, you kind of do a give and take like that so both people can progress in their career. That would be my biggest tip for doing military. When it comes to kids, keep the kids informed. Keep the kids, you know, as part of the family and the choices that are made. Let them know what's going on. Keep them informed and let them be a part of it. Because 
moving and you know just being a military child in general can be very very hard and rough on children because they move a lot they make friends and they have the pcs they have to change schools a lot it's a lot mentally on a child so keep them involved cys has so many programs for kids they have fox volleyball and soccer and basketball and ballet keep them you know engaged because i think that will really help them and travel as a family traveling as a family really really helps to bring your family together and like you all experience that military experience together that was a good question how was the first day of basic training for you the first day of basic training was scary af it was scary. Um, thank y'all for joining. Make sure you go ahead and hit the, the like button, please, so we can get some more people in here. We got a bunch of people in here now. So basic training, the first day of basic training for me was scary. I did not know what I was getting myself into when I joined the military. I had no concept of the military, what the military uh, does, what the military is, what I was going to be doing, what basic training was about. Like I literally found out when I got off the bus that day. I do not come from a military background or a military city or anything like that. So it's nothing that I knew about that I saw that I prepared myself for. And when I got when we got there, we had what was called the shark attack was now the shark attack. And. Yeah, all I can say is it scared the bejesus out of me. I was like, what did I sign myself up for? So it was scary, but it was fun. Like overall, basic training was fun. Looking back, it was so much fun and I would do it again in a heartbeat. Logan said, lie about it. <laughs> Don't lie. I have asthma and didn't tell them nothing. I hear that too. Like some people lie about it. But then, you know, when you have to do the PT test and you have to do this new sprint drag carry and all of this stuff and then run two miles and you pass out because you can't breathe. Then depending on the severity of your asthma, it could be very, very hard. <laughs> Denise said, right, lie about it. Y'all crazy. I'm not going to tell nobody to lie about it because you might get hurt. Crystal said that makes sense. Thank you for answering. You're welcome. The Gamer Coop YouTube channel said, Congrats on the re up. I just gave the Army another six that would take me out to 20. Okay, okay. I love the Army and the opportunities that it has blessed me with. Where are you headed next? So, me and you sound like we in the same boat. I gave the Army another seven, which would take me out to 20. I myself love the Army. I love everything that it has provided for me and my family, the opportunities. Like, it has just really blessed us. And gave me a life and a platform that I probably wouldn't have had I not joined. So we are going to Texas next. Texas next. And I'm so ready to leave the DMV. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, to, to the gamer Coop too. Congratulations. And he said, congratulations. You're welcome. 20, congratulations. Yes, I can't wait till I get to 20. Another seven, and I'll be at 20. I thought six was enough. <laughs> you know, I originally signed up for five when I joined the military. I signed up for five years, and I told myself, I'm only doing five, and then I'm getting out. And now I'm at 13. So, yes, and it went by so fast. Like, I literally feel like I joined my, I feel like I joined probably, like, five or six years ago it does not feel like it's been as long as it has it went by super 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 fast and now it's like very rewarding i have a question regarding a unrestricted cid sharp investigation you may want to uh holler at me offline deja just dm me please mg glam said Texas, yes girl is heart murmur a disqualification for the army i'm not sure that would be a Recruiter question, like all of those medical type questions, I really don't know. Um, but your recruiter can let you know. People don't get, I'm working on my master's and haven't paid a dime on my education. I try to school the youth on the Army's opportunities. Lifelong learning is the key. Yes, I agree as well. Exactly. Um, I earned my bachelor's degree as well on the Army's dime. And then I got a $10,000 bonus that same year I reenlisted. And I paid back all of my student loans that I had acquired prior to me joining the military, trying to go to college. So I should have just went straight out of high school, like I always say. My mom told me about your YouTube channel. Oh, I went to MEPS today and 
and now enlisted. What was the next step for you? What do you mean? What was the next step? Like after I went to Mets? Is that what you're talking about? And tell your mama she cool. Thank you for suggesting me. Tell moms I said what's up. Deja said yes, ma'am. Yes, I have my uh my my Instagram handle there, Deja. So just DM me. Um, how I tried even ask my daughter to help me DM. So my Instagram handle is right here scrolling on the bottom of the screen. So you can follow me on Instagram. And then once you follow me, you can message me on Instagram if you have any questions. Hello, Jeanette, Jane Doe. I like that name. Hey, thank y'all. Go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. So we in here talking. We started about talking about um, hairstyles for the basic training in the military. And so if I have any new people that's joined since we were talking about basic training hairstyles, please give me your insight on like, what do you suggest is the best hairstyle for for females joining? Because I get this question all of the time. And my go to answer is cornrow straight to the back. When I say cornrow straight to the back, I'm talking about the Cleo cornrows, y'all like set it off Cleo. Straight to the back with your real hair. Jane Doe said, are you still in the U.S. Army? Yes, I am. I went to work today. <laughs> um, And I go on leave next week, y'all. So next week I'll be tuning in with y'all from, from on vacation. But yes, I'm still in the Army. I just re-enlisted for another seven years. We were supposed to talk about Sharp for a topic one day. Yes, I still have to read the, probably this weekend, I'll get time to read the Vanessa Gian stuff. Because I want to really like read it, read it, read it. I watched your video, but how is it for real? Are you talking about basic training? You're talking about the army? You're talking about my job? You're talking about Fort Belvoir? Like, what do you mean it? Texas is lit. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. Are you from Texas? I'm excited about going to Texas. Denise said, I did. You're beautiful. Thank you. I can't wait until I go. I'm excited for you, Denise. Good talk. Good question. Stay motivated, everyone. Much love from Camp Humphreys. Later. Bye. Thank you. Camp Humphreys, Korea in the house. Thank you, Third Lynch. <laughs> I suggest the Screaming Eagle. So we got your boy Third Lynch in the house, y'all. He was the other um, YouTuber that I was talking about when we talked about YouTubers. Make sure y'all check him out and his channel out. <laughs> um, Congratulations and enjoy your vacation. Girl, let me tell you, I'm going to be super duper duper excited when I go to um vacation. Oh. Thursday Lynch, Lynch. I ain't trying to put you out there, but um, y'all, we got a drill sergeant in the house. So if y'all have some drill sergeant questions, y'all better go ahead and spit them out real quick and say, before he leave. I'm currently stationed in Texas. Yes, Thursday Lynch. 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 Thank you. Thank you for stopping through. I appreciate the love. Can I wear your hat? What hat? <laughs> oh, you talk about the drill sergeant hat. Okay, how much push-ups do I have to do? I'm 34. So, Denise, there is a whole, like, uh, what's the word? Standards, PT standards on Google. So you can Google because now it's the ACFT. So I couldn't even tell you. I don't even know what the scores are for ACFT because we haven't actually really taken a real one. Um, but please Google the ACFT standards for your age and it will tell you your minimum. All of that stuff is online. I, I really couldn't even tell you off the top of my head because it's new. All of the ACFT stuff is fairly, fairly new. All right, y'all, we are at 53 minutes. I've been talking to y'all for a whole 53 minutes. We had so many people stop through the live tonight. Thank y'all for hitting that thumbs up button for your girl, getting all these people in here. We had lots of new faces in here and some of the same OGs that come through every single night, like Logan Davis and Danique and it's Cammie. Thank y'all for showing love and coming through. 
Okay, third Lynn said with the ACFT for push up, it depends on your MOS. ACFT is not age specific. Okay, there you go. I forgot it. They changed everything with your MOS. So, yeah, it is. Uh, you can look all of that up still. You can Google it. Look all of that stuff up. Like I said, I only took the diagnostic a few times. Um, I'm at Goodfellow Air Force Base. It's a training base in West Texas. Okay, okay. Thanks for all of the help and info. You are welcome. Danique said, don't forget to add me to your Instagram. Add me, Danique. <laughs> you have to add me on there. Um, my MOS is 92 Yankee. Okay, in the house, 92 Yankees, and thank you. You are welcome. If if you if you add me and I see you pop up, then I will definitely add you. So for anybody that's in this live, um, make sure y'all go to my my business Instagram, which is scrolling at the bottom. And if you want me to follow you, I definitely will. Leave me a DM and just say, hey, I was in your live. Can you follow me? And I will definitely follow you back and give y'all a shout out. So because I have like my day ones that's in here every single night. I appreciate y'all rocking with me every night. Okay, so I must I'll see it and I'll follow you. Just if you can DM me though, so I know because some people's name is different here than it is on Instagram, and then I'll be like, is this the same person? And then I end up following somebody else. <laughs> so we are at 55 minutes, y'all. I think I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. I'm going to see you all tomorrow, manana. Um, same time, same place. Holla at your girl. All right, y'all. I will see y'all tomorrow.